Kai Havertz to Arsenal. Now, where has this come from? Well, that was exactly my reaction when the news has come out in the last couple of days. Uh, now it's emerged that Arsenal have had their first bid rejected. Um, it looks like Arteta is very keen to get this deal done for around 60 million. Um, so in this video, I'm going to try and make sense of all the chaos in terms of what type of a player is Kai Havertz, where could he fit in and what could he bring to Arsenal, and also weigh up the, the pros and cons of the signing and hopefully um, give some insight and for you guys watching the video, allow you to take away your own opinions of whether you think this will be a good signing or not. So without further ado, let's get into Kai Havertz to Arsenal. We're going to start with what type of a player is Kai Havertz. Um, in terms of profile, think more of a quintessential number 10, like a Mesut Ozil, that languid type. He has that freedom to combine deep, but also make late runs into the box. But the wave in football management recently has been the well-documented decline of this typical number 10, shifting to either a number 8 in a midfield 3, where... Instead of sort of operating behind um, the whole front line, these types of players take on a more specialised role in certain areas of the pitch. For example, Martin Erdegaard or Kevin De Bruyne operating in that right-hand-sided half space more specifically. Alternatively, though, some number 10s have become false nines. Think in the Premier League, Roberto Firmino. And the reason... Uh, this has happened, you know, the number 10 has gone into a false nine is because their quality to combine, create space for others uh, with their movement, uh, drop deep. And there's not as big of an insistence or an emphasis on their press resistance or their ball striking. And Havertz is part of this wave, but it's not really his fault, as I'll get into. Like I said, his midfielder traits have developed him into more of a link man up front, uh, a space creator for others. His height also allows him to provide a vocal point uh, whilst being able to operate in those tight spaces, um, meaning he's actually quite a multifaceted player. What's interesting is that both Thomas Tuchel and Thierry Henry have in profile, not in terms of quality, of course, but in profile described him as a Robin Van Persie-esque type player. You know, those long, lanky, lim long, lanky limbs but um, a control of the body at the same time that he probably still has yet to master. Tuchel has also described him as a Dennis Burkamp or a Dimitar Berbatov. These types of nines that like to be free from the typical rigid constraints in and around the penalty box. You know, Havertz loves to create overloads out wide, so you can't ever expect, expect him to be a 25-goal-plus striker. That's not the type of profile he is. Um, but he is a much more free-flowing player and he likes to be much more free-flowing than his time at Chelsea has actually forced him into. However, this skill set in his game is contrasted to his lack of physicality um, and a physical frame that he has yet to grow into. And this means the skills in his game that I've just outlined, he can't really yet do reliably. For example, his potential to play with his back to goal or be a useful outlet to run in behind. He's still good. Uh, a number of these, but he's not elite at anything as of yet. This ties into Kai Havertz and his sort of stop-start development um, and where he can develop more, which I'm going to talk about now. A key argument for you know advocating the signing of Kai Havertz to Arsenal is his potential to grow into his frame. And this has been chucked around a lot, but I want to actually describe to you guys what that actually means. What does growing into your body mean for a football player and Kai Havertz in particular? Well, of course, he would win more duels and become more dependable when pinned up against or running in behind a defender. Um, also more reliable when linking play, as he's not brushed off the ball as, e uh, as easily. And you can start to tie in those skill sets that we were talking about that actually give him a potential to be a very, very good player. This also, growing to his frame, I think would really stretch to his goal, goal scoring. People might say, why? You know, this is quite an inherent quality when we're talking about ball striking that he's been criticised for. I actually don't think it's that bad as people think. Um, with a more physical body, I think he can support himself in the strike more. Um, I, I think this is a very underrated aspect of ball striking, the, the platform you give yourself. He's only really good at striking the ball from settled play at the minute. Growing physically as well is all about dominating space. And again, I go back to that platform. Um, 
it gives you that power to take over sp the space of a defender, have that devastating quality in the final third that maybe centrally Arsenal have lacked at times. Uh, it would also give probably him more intensity running in behind as himself he would believe more that he can you know, cause a nuisance running in, in behind the shoulder of a defender, losing using those long, hard-to-stop legs with now a more filled-out frame. Of course, he's part of he has been part over the last few years, even when Chelsea won the Champions League in, in 2021. He's been part of a very unstable football club. And I think this ties into confidence. And that's a very clear part of his game um, that's, that's been lost. And with confidence comes, you know, a sharpening of your actions. Tuchel really wanted to play to Havertz's strength, but himself and other managers have been torn between playing him as a rigid nine or more of a false nine, an advanced 10, um, because at Chelsea, there's been no one as good as him. And of course, his deficiencies aren't set in stone. He's never had this stability as a player. So I think maybe as fans looking objectively, we maybe have to check our expectations with Kai Havertz. But I want to now talk about, you know, this is all well and good, the potential that Kai Havertz has, but do Arsenal and do Arteta actually need him? This is another um, bit of criticism that has been levied at the signing. So let's say he fills out his frame. What are we left with? Um, my initial reaction was uh, another potentially elite ball retainer and link man that we already seem to have in Gabriel Jesus and also Eddie Nketiah. All three possess really good movement in and around the box and in regards to Jesus help facilitate the build-up on the left-hand side um, and also pretty competent in the air and then I would also say where Havertz actually comes in below Jesus and Nketiah um, these sort of smaller and more powerful builds they're much more suited for fast transitions while still being able to re retain the ball with lower centers of gravity quite well um, winning duels, being aggressive. This is where Kai Havertz comes in below them, actually. Despite his frame, he's not as strong as them. Um, and when you put that with finishing, that certainly, although I've praised its uh, potential ceiling, certainly still needs to be worked on. Um, it's one of those where you can, and I can, understand both sides of the Kai Havertz argument. And people also probably bring back to me that I said his role as a 10 converted to a nine is out of fashion and it is um unless you're someone like a jesus who looks increasingly more potent from the wings uh, and whose physical traits can really play across the front line Havertz, it kind of leads him as an odd one out i think what erling Haaland has shown us is that a there's a, been a return to the more complete striker the one that can do it all the frightening movement in behind the devastating finisher the big physical frame to help link up play. Of course, Erling Haaland only excels if you have the right profiles around him to balance him out. And I think this is why someone like an Evan Ferguson from Brighton will be so sought after um, in the coming years. So again, where does this leave Havertz? He's not really a priority signing. Um, you know, getting a number six and a number eight, as I will explain later on Havertz is not really a solution to the left-hand sided eight as people have maybe outlined these remain the staple transfers in our window this summer um, however if we are able to bring these players in using the strengths I've outlined for Kai Havertz I think Havertz can actually play a very important role in this Arteta side moving forward so let's get into that now yeah so what may Kai Havertz bring that isn't just seemingly what we already have I think this is very important Arsenal tactically and technically are very similar to Pep Guardiola. We know this, um, but there's one key difference. I would say Pep Guardiola's first choice front line for Manchester City involves Grealish and Bernardo Silva, two typically wide sideline wingers who retain possession. That's their, their key role. And in tandem to his second choice pairing, which is, let's say, Mahrez and Foden, who take a more direct approach. This isn't a bad thing at all. This is actually quite a good thing. But depending on which combination Pep Guardiola goes for, he is forced into choosing um, a specific style of play attacking an opponent's box. And if we flip over to Arsenal and Arteta, we have Martinelli, as Sa Martinelli and Saka as our first choice pairing and Nelson, Trossard, maybe Jesus um, 
as the understudies to them in terms of minutes. These guys can both retain it wide and combine this with a more direct approach. That's not to say the Manchester City players cannot do either, um, but Arsenal have much more of a balance. And I would say this means our goals across the front line are much more shared. Of course, you play to Haaland's strengths and he is totally justified in having an emphasis on the goals at Man City. And of course, they score goals from elsewhere. Um, but you have to play to the strengths of the world's best striker, a forward like Haaland, who largely stays in and around the box to finish and kill teams off. Now, Arteta certainly admires these types of strikers. Think about the Tammy Abraham, the Alexander Izak, the Dusan Vlahovic links that we've seen in recent times. I'm sure there's more as well. But I think Havertz has this potential in his height but there's also a bit of a merger between Jesus. Like I said, he's not going to have that responsibility to score every single goal for Arsenal and his ability to create space for midfielders or wingers to attack the box by dropping deeper or moving into the half spaces or little pockets of space in the left or right hand sided channels. This really suits Arsenal's current dynamic uh, focused on fluid combinations. This certainly improves us against low blocks as well. If we don't have that Haaland type who can literally bully a central defender. Um, it gives us a bigger dynamism in behind his, like I said, his movement will allow us to control games easier, certainly. Um, not becoming too predictable. And a team that dominates the ball suits a Kai Havertz. But let me go back to his height, because I've touched on that. This gives us something different, and it's where we get the merger between a Jesus type forward and, you know, those bigger profiles. By being... Similar to these larger forwards, it's a different focal point for Arsenal. It allows us, like I say, against these low blocks or these bigger defences to mix up our mode of attack. It also allows us to progress up the pitch in a different way. Instead of um, balls in behind on the floor, we can cer certainly start to go over the top. Um, and again, this all goes back to Havertz growing into his body, something that will make him even more efficient at this. Balls over the top now becoming more possible. Um, he also has the ability to bring it down. I've seen so many times when he's got in behind, um, he brings the ball down very easily with his left foot, Kai Havertz. And again, I go back to those long, lanky legs, which are actually a very interesting in terms of profiling a footballer. They're very hard to stop for defenders. You know, Kai Havertz has the ability to be a transition monster and really help us in certainly the Champions League next season. A competition defined by moments, by counter-attacks, much more than the control and the overarching dominance in a domestic league season. He also has the ability to become an aerial threat, composed in the build-up, shooting, um, dominate space. And Arteta clearly thinks it's a risk worth taking in order to try and get these benefits out of a Kai Havertz and give Arsenal something different. And this idea of difference makes us realise that Arteta himself is changing his own ideas as time goes on. We've seen Pep Guardiola um, flip to defending with four or five centre-backs in his 3-2-5 shape this season. Well, Arteta, um, of course, is changing his own ideas as well. We saw Zinchenko invert success successfully from left-back into midfield across the whole season. Well, it was Thomas Partey from right back into midfield um, against Nottingham Forest and Wolves at the end of this season. And this shift from left to right may uh, illuminate why Kai Havertz is so in intriguing um, for Arteta in terms of you know wanting to buy him for Arsenal. He will predominantly play, like I said, not um, a left-hand side in number eight. It will be a shadow striker from the left, maybe an out-and-out centre-forward, or maybe playing in tandem with Jesus. We'll go back to that right-hand-sided bias. Um, this may, this Havertz transfer, may actually free up the space for Jesus to go and um, interchange with Bakayo Saka over on the right-hand side. Too many times, if you, could, if you could critique the attacking dynamic in Arsenal at all, it's Saka at times has been too isolated on that right-sided sideline, you know, not as conducive to Erdegaard's passing and body angles. But potentially, Havertz as a shadow striker and Jesus interchanging with, with Saka himself, certainly in games that we dominate the ball in, that's a mouth-watering proposition. And one that, again, I'll go back to low blocks, will make breaking down them much, much easier.
And if Havertz ever does play that lone striker role, which if he does get signed, I'm sure he will, um, that also allows Saka's minutes to be shared with Jesus over on the right-hand side. We desperately need backup to Saka on that right-hand side. But alternatively, Havertz for Bayer Leverkusen actually played on that right-hand side as well. So maybe that's something Arteta could even explore. This versatility for Kai Havertz is something that has been signalled as certainly an appeal point. Um, for a potential transfer and maybe him occasionally lining up on the the right hand side if we ever need it for a particular reason that's another shift in the dynamic to maybe a more slower possession based winger that Pep Guardiola uses at Manchester City and before I finish I want to I, I promise I would get onto this Havertz as the left hand side in number eight from you know the reasons that I've just said his more you know his attacking traits his ability to run in behind the list goes on. You can go back and watch the video. This left-hand side in number eight position, the one that Granite Xhaka has occupied so well for us this year, this will not be a position Kai Havertz takes up regularly for Arsenal. Look at Xhaka for Arsenal or a Gundogan um, or a De Jong for Barcelona. These players have to be useful in all phases of play. So that's winning duels, which of course isn't Havertz, you know, in terms of defensive duels. That isn't a trait of his. Um, they have to be used in deep build-up, building up from the back as well. So this just isn't a position for Kai Havertz. I also think that Arteta may want to replace Granit Xhaka with a more two-footed player. Maybe, you know, this is just me musing at this point, but maybe Xhaka's left-footedness, um, again, Erdegaard's very left-foot dominance as well. Maybe he wants to change it up where we have one player in the number eight who is much more two-footed, maybe, just maybe. However. There are reasons why people think he may occupy the number eight role. It's not going to happen, but the reason why people do is because there will be phases in the game where Havertz's natural drifting um, and the positions he likes to take up, for example, creating creating space for others with movement, um, he will often find himself in that left-hand sided channel in, in and around the box that Xhaka found himself in without actually playing as that number eight. And of course, in this position, there's an upgrade on composure, finishing, uh, Havertz, from what I've seen, from watching him sporadically at Chelsea, uh, is very good at cutbacks. So he's just a massive offensive upgrade for Granit Xhaka when he gets into those positions Xhaka's found himself in this season. I'd say as well, one thing Xhaka was very good at, but didn't do enough, and we as a team do not do enough, is half space crosses. What's interesting about Kai Havertz is that he can both do these crosses he can play them into the box and in behind over the top of taller center halves but he can also be the focal point for these crosses um, and this just presents another mode another form of goals into our attack that actually most top teams are a lot lot better at us than um, think about Jesus's goal away at Brentford that was a half space cross from Granite Xhaka these routes into the box are so efficient they're such great way of scoring goals and we just don't do it enough but i will accept for a lot of people this is a very confusing transfer of course we have to sign him first but we won't exactly know where arteta wants to deploy deploy him until he signs like i said certainly won't be um consistently used as a number eight it will be a more advanced position uh, i'm now going to move on to my overall thoughts of the signing my general opinion and to sum up the video so when the news broke I was in a very strange place, like most of us, but I've come round to the idea of Kai Havertz more. Um, I don't think it's a question of him simply being overrated uh, and not actually very good. I think that's wrong. Um, I think we could have got a lot less for him if we had waited longer, but it looks like Arteta really wants to wrap this deal up quickly. And that's what people are saying. £60 million is a lot of money um, for an unproven quantity still. Um, and for me, number six position, Declan Rice, potentially, and a Granite Xhaka replacement are much bigger priorities. Havertz undoubtedly improves the squad, but not the same transformative effects as these midfield signings will provide. Um, but if we manage to get these players in, put Kai Havertz on top of that, it's a very good window. And like I said, a risk worth taking. And if he doesn't explode under Arteta, like the Spaniard clearly thinks he can, Although, you know, three times the price of a Trossard, he will be a greater strength and depth, ultimately. What would make more sense is this could 
potentially signal the exit of Eddie and Ketia. Like I said, I see Havertz more as an advanced 10 shadow striker or centre forward um, under Arteta. And my, I myself am a massive fan of Eddie and Ketia. People who know me know that I, I, love, I love him as a player. And Arteta may, if he lets Nketiah go now, see something similar um, in Havertz from Eddie Nketiah. We saw when Nketiah came back, certainly from lockdown, and he had looked like he'd matured into his body, put on mass, um, and he became a much bigger threat. Maybe it's the same deal with Kai Havertz. You know, this is probably why I'm sprung more on the idea of Havertz than most. The hope is you can coach and specialise Havertz um, so he becomes elite in his one role. Give him that freedom, but with a clearly outlined um, job to do in the team. So overall, not against the signing at all. Arteta has changed my way of thinking, you know, not to the point where I just blindly agree with him because I really don't think this signing should be a priority. Um, and I believe it's certainly a risk to invest in a player still needing to develop a lot at this stage of our project where we're looking to put the last few cherries on top of the cake, if you will to mount a proper title challenge. But Arteta's I talent ID has made me consider and watch football differently. Um, it's made me look into things and look, he clearly believes he can make Havertz uh, a real fan favourite here. And in the environment at Arsenal, under his guidance and the system that I've just outlined, this really may suit Kai Havertz. What I will say is this is a much more divisive signing than Jorginho's. And now we're approaching I would say a transfer window where we're desperately craving a settled squad coming out of it, going towards this title charge. I understand people when they think Havertz is a bit more dubious because he absolutely is, but I think Arteta's warranted our trust and and I think 60 million will feel like an absolute steal if we can recapture that player Chelsea bought from Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, and for the reasons I've discussed, this certainly has the potential to happen. Um, there's no doubt there's a player in there. Of course, Real Madrid wanted him. Of course, he's nowhere near, nowhere near as good as Karim Benzema, but you can see why Ancelotti did want him. Um, the idea of that free-flowing centre-forward, able to play with his back to goal, uh, link up, move well, they're similar types. So look, there's lots of debate over this um, that's divided. I hope I've brought a bit of perspective and now you can form your own opinions off the back of this video and hopefully see the side of why Kai Havertz has the potential to be a really top signing. But that's all from me. Probably been a long video this. Um, but like I said, I've really had to probe deep into Kai Havertz, do some research. Um, and it's made me come around to the idea of him. Again, it is a risk, um, but one that I hope can pay off in the future. That's all from me. Hope you really, really enjoyed this video. Please like, comment and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.